In the last few lessons, we've introduced cosets and proven a couple things about them. Today, we'll prove one last result before the big reveal of Lagrange's theorem. We're proving that if HA is any coset of a subgroup H, then there is a one-to-one -one correspondence from the subgroup H to the coset HA. Again, we will work with right cosets, but this theorem could analogously be proven for left cosets. Now, by a one-to-one -one correspondence, of course, we mean a bijection. There exists a bijection from the subgroup H to the arbitrary coset. This means that the subgroup and the coset have exactly the same number of elements. So, importantly, what we're really proving here is that any coset HA will have the same number of elements as the subgroup H. So, all cosets of H in the containing group G will have the same number of elements because all the cosets of H have as many elements as H and so all the cosets of H have the same number of elements as each other. All right, let's get into the proof. It's very straightforward. To prove there is a one-to-one -one correspondence from the subgroup H to the coset HA, we need to find some function between them and prove that it is a bijection, that it is injective and surjective. The most obvious function from the subgroup H to the coset HA is this function F, which takes each H from the subgroup and just maps it to HA in the coset, and it will be straightforward to show this is injective and surjective. To prove our function f is injective, we will let f of h1 equal f of h2. For a function to be injective, distinct elements of the domain must have distinct images in the range. So if we have these two elements of the range that are equal, f of h1 and f of h2, to prove f is injective, we just need to show that this forces h1 and h2 to be equal. If the outputs are equal, these inputs must be equal. By definition of the function, f of h1 equaling f of h2 means that h1 times a equals h2 times a. Again, this is just by definition of the function, but then this immediately gives us the result we want, multiplying by a inverse on the right side, on both sides of the equation, that just leaves us with h1 equals h2. And of course, we know that a inverse is a thing because a comes from the containing group g. It's a group, so it's got inverses. So we arrive at the desired result that the inputs h1 and h2 must be equal. Thus, our function f is injective. To prove that it's surjective, it's even easier. Remember that what makes a function surjective is that every element in the codomain, so in this case every element of the coset HA, is the image of some element in the domain. So we just have to take an arbitrary element of the coset, and each element of the coset looks like this, H A. So our arbitrary element can have this form H A. Since this element H is in the subgroup big H, that's the domain of our function. And so we can put it in our function and see that F of H will equal H A. So in fact, any element of the codomain is the image of some element of the domain. Thus, f is surjective, so it is a bijection. We've proven that it's injective and surjective. So there is a one-to-one -one correspondence, a bijection, from the subgroup H to the coset HA. This means, by definition, that the cardinalities of the subgroup H and the arbitrary coset HA are equal. They do have the same size. So again, let's visit this important consequence of what we've proven. Any coset HA, we just proved that it will have the same number of elements as the subgroup H. And what that means is that all cosets of the subgroup H in the containing group G will have the same number of elements. All cosets of a subgroup will have the same number of elements. Very cool. 
This result, along with the results we've previously proven about cosets, establish Lagrange's theorem, a really important theorem in abstract algebra. It states that for a finite group G and a subgroup H of G, the order of the group G, its number of elements, will be a multiple of the order of the subgroup H. Any subgroup of a group G will have to have an order that is a factor of the containing group. Really cool theorem, and we'll go into this in more detail next time.